the launch of Mariner 10. These photographs of the Earth were taken to test the cameras that were to photograph both Venus and Mercury for the first time. After leaving the gravitational field of Earth, Mariner 10 began its long voyage to Mercury. The spacecraft's flight path was carefully chosen to skim past the planet orbiting between Earth and Mercury, cloud-covered Venus. The Mariner 10 cameras at close range were to show us a startling new Venus, a Venus we couldn't see from Earth. The gravitational field of Venus was used to bend the flight path of Mariner 10 inwards towards Mercury. Then the gravity of the Sun pulled Mariner towards its first encounter with the planet. In March of 1974, Mariner 10 flew past Mercury. During the next year, it would perform two more flybys. Mercury's orbit around the sun is 88 Earth days. Mariner 10's orbit was twice as long, or 176 days. These synchronous orbits allowed Mariner 10 to fly past Mercury a second and third time. The path of the first flyby was on the dark side of Mercury. The second encounter sent the spacecraft past the light side of the planet specifically for photography. After another six-month journey around the sun, Mariner 10 made its third and final encounter Thirty-five seconds. Hydraulics go. Thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. We're still go entering the terminal phase. Fifteen seconds. Locks topping now. Underway. Green board. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, main engine start, two, one, and zero, and liftoff of Messenger on NASA's mission to Mercury, a planetary enigma in our inner solar system. Pitch program is in, roll program is in. Control rates all look normal. Steering looks good. Now going through the sound barrier. Now going through the period of dyna maximum dynamic pressure. Acquisition now at Jupiter Inlet. Engines reporting burning well, solids reported burning well. Going now to telemetry engineer Steve Agate. 60 seconds. We'll have symmetrical burn on the six round lit solids. We'll be burning out shortly. Chamber pressures on those six ground lit solids are trailing off.
Uh, the Mercury 1 flyby is going to be really exciting for the magnetometer because that's an opportunity for the magnetometer to really take center stage uh, at the operations and, and the science of Mercury. Um, the origin of the magnetic field at Mercury really is a mystery. It was thought that it was going to have a solid core. The fact that it has a magnetic field at all, uh, as large as it is, even though it's only 1% of Earth's field, um, is quite surprising and suggests that there remains at least a fraction of a liquid core. Um, the relation between a liquid core and a magnetic field is that it is the convection and the churning of the liquid core uh, that produces the magnetic field. Um, so that the presence of the magnetic field is an indicator of the internal structure of the planet. The only measurements we have so far of Mercury's magnetic field were conducted in 1974 and 1975 by the Mariner 10 spacecraft. Um, it has been 30 years or more since the time of those measurements. Earth's magnetic field changes by a fraction of a percent every year. If the source of the magnetic field at Mercury is a thin shell of a molten core, it may be that that magnetic field is changing faster than that. We may even be able to detect that on the first Mercury 1 flyby. So the Mercury 1 flyby may hold a real surprise and is something we're anticipating with a considerable amount of excitement. On March 17th, the tiny Messenger spacecraft completed its primary mission to orbit and observe the planet Mercury for one Earth year. The mission has completely altered our understanding of the solar system's innermost planet and has been so successful that it's been extended for another year. Scientists have found that Mercury's core is larger than anticipated. It occupies 85% of the planetary radius. The researchers use Messenger's radio tracking to develop the first precise model of Mercury's gravity field. When combined with topographic data and the planet's spin state, this model sheds light on the planet's internal structure, the thickness of its crust, the size and state of its core, and its tectonic and thermal history. Many scientists thought the interior might have cooled to a solid because of the planet's small size. However, subtle motions measured from Earth-based radar, combined with the newly measured parameters of the gravity field, plus an internal magnetic field that signifies an active core dynamo, indicate that the planet's core is at least partially liquid. 
Mercury's core is different from any other planetary core in the solar system. Earth has a metallic liquid outer core sitting above a solid inner core. Mercury appears to have a solid silicate crust and mantle overlying a solid iron sulfide outer core layer, a deeper liquid core layer, and possibly a solid inner core. These results have implications for how Mercury's magnetic field is generated and for understanding how the planet evolved thermally. A planet's topography can reveal fundamental information about its internal structure and its geological and thermal evolution. Ranging observations from MESSENGER's Mercury Laser Altimeter have provided the first ever precise topographic model of the planet's northern hemisphere and characterized slopes and surface roughness over a range of spatial scales.